everybody's about what they see. So, icon means likeness or as a copy. Because, see, watch this. Everything you see is not the real thing. Just like everything you hear is not the real thing. As we said here earlier, is it live or is it Memorex? It can either be live that I'm getting it or somebody gives me a carbon copy that I get fooled that it's the real thing. So when I understand about the image, understand, watch this, everybody in the world is in the image of God, but everybody ain't in the likeness of God. What has happened is there's a break in identity structure from Genesis 126. Because we all, we all sold out when, we, when we're Bible believers and we read that. We say, okay, I'm in the image of God. So everybody automatically believes they, they look like God and they look him, but they miss the second part, the likeness. Now watch this. Likeness in the Hebrew comes from the word demuth. Demuth means likeness or similitude, but what I want you to bring to your attention is what I got in parentheses. Likeness is in feminine gender. Now, why, why am I bringing that to y'all attention? For those that are theologically inclined, when we start looking at the trichotomy of God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, in the deepness of looking at the word spirit, in the Hebrew it comes from pneuma, but you'll go and find out that Numa is in feminine gender. You ain't never wondered why there's a male and a female in the natural? It's because there's a female identity within God, which is the Holy Spirit. It's the emotional character of God. So the emotional character, oh, uh, y'all, I ain't even trying to preach on that, but it's the demon. And so now he says, okay, as my image, you're empty. But it takes my likeness or my character or my spirit to fill you so that now your image can be animated to be like the likeness. I gave y'all something there. So we're created in his image, and we have the capability of being in his likeness, but some of us ain't wanting his likeness to be inside his image. I've got to get my identity together. So I first got to understand, just like we know as a trichotomy being, we're body, soul, spirit. I've got to understand that dimension in the spiritual realm, and believe it or not, that'll give me my answer why the Godhead is trichotomy when I understand it for myself. Okay. Now, not only are we created in his image, in his likeness, or have the capability, with us having that, it means we come from his tapestry. We come from his DNA. So that's why now the scripture also says we are the sons of God. So that makes us little G's when we recognize the big G was our seed donor. I'm just keeping it real. Unless I know that there was a seed donor that created my spirit. Because right now, in our human, limited, finite minds, we only see our daddy and our mama as the seed donor that made us in the natural. But we don't see the seed donor in the spiritual to give credit to who our daddy is. And so if I am going to do anything on his behalf, I really got to understand how he produced the seed to make me. See, that's why, why folks still stuck on trying to figure out how Christ was made in Mary. Okay, my bad. But we have not looked at how he made us. Okay. So we're created to be sons. Let's, I'm going to look at scripture. In John chapter 10. John chapter 10. Verse 34 and 35. Now, what's deep is this is where a lot of people get, get their theological dilemmas. Because when you start talking about being little G's, 
oh man, everybody ready to trip then. They fix and explode. And, and that's one of, one of the other reasons why we're struggling with our identity as well, because the world is arguing with you as to uh, accepting the fact what your real identity is. All right? Now, in this scripture, Christ, the Son of God, that we believe as our Lord and Savior that died on the cross, is talking to the scribes, Sadducees, and Pharisees. And the verse says, here in verse 31, Jesus answered them, Is it not written in your law? I said, Ye are gods. Verse 35, If he called them gods unto whom the word of God came, and the scripture cannot be broken. Uh, are y'all really hearing what I'm saying? You're the revelation here. Your identity makes you become little versions of him in the earth realm because he's your daddy in the spiritual realm. But now Jesus was talking to the worst folks of all and told them, not only am I telling you, but my daddy wrote it in the law that you keep, that you are gods and children of the Most High. That's where you find in Psalms 82.6, it says, you are the uh, children of God, you are gods and the children of the Most High. So the scripture there reendorses that it wasn't something new. Jesus just thought something brand new up and speaking to them. He said, it's already written in the Holy Writ that y'all have had for generations that called you this. I'm only reminding you of your identity. See, it's just like this. Just because sin came into the picture, we went into amnesia. Okay, we, we, we got amnesia. What happened is, we went into a coma that sin laid on us, and you know as well as I do, anybody that go to the doctors, to the hospital, and they have a medical procedure done that changes them, Notice, catch, catch this. When I have a medical procedure done that's going to change me, notice they've got to give me anesthesia. If it's something that ain't going to do a major change to me, it's, it's in and out. Y'all feel what I'm saying? They, they may give you some pain medicine, but they say, you can keep your eyes open, you'll be all right. But notice if it's something that's majorly changing me, I've got to have anesthesia. All right, now, once they put me under and they do whatever they're going to do to me, when I wake up, notice somebody got to come to me and say, hey, bro, what's your name? Right. What year is it? Who's the president? Yeah. Uh, uh, where do you live at? Do you know your phone number? If not, let me give you your identity. So what happens is because we were born already in amnesia, because of what Adam did 6,000 years ago or further, we're already born dumb. That's why we have to be retaught. Or, I hope y'all learning something right now. That's why we got to be retaught or retrained as a child because we have no consciousness of who we are or our identity, whether spiritual or physical. And so it takes somebody that has some knowing or some sense to say, okay, you're a little boy, and your name is Tommy, or your name is Peter or Mark, and you live at so-and-so address, I'm your father, this is your mother. Yeah, it sounds funny, but I'm giving y'all the reality. So, 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 so what happens is, Jesus says, hey, this ain't something brand new. It was written and made for the record who you are, but be it that I'm the prophet in the season right now, since you done let amnesia go for the duration of your life, somebody need to tell you who you are. Uh -huh. okay. Okay. Yep. So now, it brings us still back here, still not identity, in the book of Romans. Amen, amen, praise God. I don't mean to sound like I'm preaching, but I... I, I Amen. I've got up here Romans 8, 28, and, and 29, but I'm also going to hit verse 19. It says, For the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. All right. 
So that says this, because I got, I got to try it. I'm sorry I missed it, listing it on here, but I'm going to bring something to your attention. All right, let me jump down to verse 28. And we know that all things work together for the good of them that love God, to whom are the called according to his purpose. We need to give an invitation. Verse 30, uh, or, or, or 29, it says, For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestine to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Okay, so I'm going to tie this together for y'all. It talks about the earnest expectation of the creature. Now, a lot of people got that thing twisted. They, they, they say that's, you know, the deer, the antelope, cow, cat, dog, hog. Wait, no. It's talking about you. See, you as a spiritual being, but you became a creature because you had an unknown identity when you were formed in the flesh. So until you get an identity, you become a creature that's undefined. That's why right now we're undefined. We're still trying to find ourselves. That means, I don't know, man is still trying to study what a human being is. So be it that I don't know and can, can package what a human being is, I'm still a creature. Anything I can't define that has life to it, I define it as a creature until I can identify it and classify it. So right now, it's so many versions of us, we're unclassified. Each and every one of us is a different version. Even though we've got the same identity or DNA within, you're a little bit different from me, I'm a little different from you. So that makes me a creature that's still waiting to find my identity as a son. Once I find that I'm a son, no longer do I have no identity because adoption comes into the picture. But we'll, we'll, we'll get that later here in, in the slide. I just want to make sure everybody got this clear. So now that I'm waiting for myself to come into a realization, y'all know David said, renew the right spirit within me. The scripture said David came unto himself. See, David didn't know who he was until the spirit came in in order for him to have a son identity. So now he's like, okay, I got a B8 moment. I can remember who I am because it's not about me being a sheep boy. It's about me being a son for God. So then God says all things work together for the good of those who are called according to his purpose or those who've gotten an invitation according to uh, uh, his setup. Because, see, if you really look at that word purpose, it comes from the Greek word prothesis, which means setup. You meant, okay, y'all ain't catching this. Because somebody should have said that, that was a slam dunk right there. Everything that you're going through is a setup. The invitation to your identity means in order for it to be endorsed, God got to set you up in order for you to walk into it and be stupefied by bumping your head and saying, wow, I didn't see that coming. Y'all got to understand that everything that we're going through ain't nothing but a setup. That's what the word is talking about. Okay, okay so the setup. Okay. So then it says that we might be the firstborn among men. Okay? Uh, Y'all got to understand that. Being the firstborn among men is the fact that you weren't born spiritually by a woman. You have to be the firstborn among men, meaning that it's your identity of being a son that you now experience a birth that you ain't never experienced before. It's one thing to have a birth by your mama with an umbilical cord, but now this is a secondary birth that comes totally from a daddy. Okay. Okay. My, my bad, my bad, my bad. Okay. So now, now, now I got to give y'all a little, little more. Can I get y'all a little more nugget just on this side? But theological nugget. Understand, we inherit the image of our, our father leaves us uh, the image our father leaves us with. In Genesis 
chapter 5 was very